Hey guys, it's Julia, aka The Mug Life DIY, and here's the mug behind the DIY. <laughs> yeah. I know, I am literally so excited for today's video, and it is the kickoff of my new monthly challenge that I'm going to be doing every first Friday at 5. So it's going to be fabulous. Every month is a new co-host and this month is my friend Jamie over at Simple Roots Civil Living and I will have her channel linked down in the description and the playlist. Playlist. Words are hard guys, I swear. <laughs> Anyways, we'll jump right into it. I hope you guys are inspired and challenged to take something furniture that maybe once was furniture, create into home decor or maybe something that wasn't furniture and creating a furniture piece in your home. I love, love, love furniture flips. I love creating pieces for my home that I am in love with. I hope you guys enjoy this challenge and the playlist and that's it guys. Let's jump right on. So for my very first flipping furniture challenge, I have had this piece literally for years. <laughs> Me and my husband picked it up out of some, I think it was a trash day, curb, find, Craigslist. Yeah, it, that's how long ago it was. It was solid wood. It is an old mid-century modern tanker desk. As you can see, pretty, pretty worn. Now, this is super heavy and it was already in our front office that we are making over. So I started off by just using my hand sander and doing a first sanding. But let me just say, these dents and dings were super bad. So I just took our multi-tool and put on the sanding sponge, which I'm going to have to switch out because the sander literally fell apart. That's how worn it was. So I kind of switched directions, of course, my style. And I changed this multi-tool for the saw blade. I wanted to kind of clean up that big old gaping hole in the front. So I just tightened the multi-tool and placed it on. Now, this is a Milwaukee multi-tool. We use it for so, so, so many projects. It is great. It has a standing head. It has the cutting blade. You can get several different types for wood, for metal, for you name it. It's wonderful. So we bought this multi-tool and I love using it. So I just cut out a nice clean square. Now, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be filling in the hole or what but then my husband had a great idea and that's where we went so i did a first kind of coat to fill in these holes with my base chalk paint now this is not going to be the final coat i love layering my pieces and i love giving them some texture and dimension you could use some wood filler to fix the holes but i didn't have any on hand when i started this project so i decided to just give the top a nice thick coat of chalk paint. Now you might be thinking, what in the world, Julia? Why are you going with the crazy blue? Well, that's kind of my style anyway, but we are putting our computer on this desk and also it'll be a place where my son can do his homeschooling and it's just kind of fun. So the middle section, I am going to be leaving this really crazy fun poppy blue. So it'll be like a peekaboo. Now on the two sides, I am painting it that blue, but you'll have to wait and see how I transform that blue and give it a really fun layered texture vibe. And after the first coat dried, I did a second coat of my chalk paint and that's all I'm doing with the chalk paint to the top. And y'all, I'm gonna introduce you to an awesome product and no, I'm not sponsored. I would love to do more projects for you guys, but I found this product on Instagram actually, Courtney, she did an awesome video. I will have that video or her Instagram linked down below, but it's called Retique It. It is literally wood. You are painting wood over your surface. It says any hard surface you can paint over. That is why I did the layer of the gray. I wanted to do a layered upon a layer just to give it a little bit more depth and that's where I'm going. So the first step is just to shake it well, mix it well, and paint it on that's it the first step is so easy it can be sloppy it doesn't have to look neat you are literally painting on wood 
Also, one thing that I absolutely, absolutely love about this product is there are no harsh chemicals in this. It has zero VOCs. I have my kids and this is perfect, especially when you are painting inside when it's cold like it is right now. So great product. I will have their list on Instagram, you name it. Absolutely loved it. Now, of course, I wanted to go with something super dramatic. So I went with their black gel stain. This one is in the classic black. It isn't quite as black as you may be thinking. And I did the first coat and that's all I wanted to do because I wanted it to really kind of have the lighter wood to pop. So what they say is to do your first coat, then do your top coat, which you can stain or paint then you want to rub in that stain and then you're going to do my favorite part which i really feel transforms this top into quite fugly <laughs> as one of my friends said into a stunning gorgeous top in the stain set that i bought it came with this wood grain tool and I had a lot of fun with it. They say you can't really make mistakes and I'm all about that because I always kind of make mistakes, but I go with it. I change things, you add things, but you just drag it along the surface. Now, once that dries, it needs about two hours to completely dry after you've put or applied your stain or your paint. And then they recommend adding a poly acrylic top coat. I have this poly acrylic from Let's see, what did I paint? I think, oh, my kitchen cabinets. I painted my kitchen island, actually painted it in that wonderful poppy blue and had some leftover, a lot leftover, and I shook that really well, stirred it, and then applied it all over my top of my desk. I know, I know. I did not record my husband putting up the front. I am going to try to explain it to you the best that I can. I kind of had an idea and told him I wanted it really geometric with the wood. So he cut down some scrap wood we had in our garage and created a really fun pattern. We just took a really thin, I believe it's maybe an eighth or a quarter sheet of plywood. He cut it down to the front size of our desk. He brad nailed that, glued that down. Then, then he started with the middle chevron angle whatever we're going to call that and started to lay down pieces and he just cut each at a diagonal angle until he got the shape that he wanted then once we had all of the pieces in place glued and brad nailed all of those pieces down of course there were a few gaps i wasn't worried about it i kind of liked that look that it gave it but i am using a little bit of wood filler now this wood filler, I absolutely love. It goes on pink and it dries natural wood. Then I just went and sanded all of the rough edges down. It does need about two hours to completely dry. Then I'm going in with some classic bright chalk white. I love, love, love this paint. This one is the Rust-Oleum. I got it at Home Depot. I believe it was about $19. I know Walmart also sells it, but I will try to find an Amazon link for you guys as well. And I literally just painted the front portion. I wanted that natural wood to kind of pop down back. And now that I'm thinking about it, it would have totally been easier if I painted all of these wood scraps first and then we nailed it to our desk, but I tend to do things backwards. And this is how we ended up me painting it after we had already put it in place. Now, if you haven't already and you love all things DIY, you love recycling, you love inexpensive project ideas that are a little bit outside the box, I would love it if you guys would subscribe to my channel. I am all about everything. I love creating pieces and just being challenged in my DIY creative craftiness. And I love, love, love creating videos for you. So if that interests you and you would love to see more, definitely subscribe to my channel. Now I do want to seal my wood. So I love this kilns. I never say it right. Kills, kills. Mm, yeah. Sealing wax. And it is designed for chalk paint. I have used it on so many of my projects and it never turns or changes the paint color, which is amazing. So I used it 
in between all those little cracks and crevices for all of the wood and also for all of my white painted chalk paint and also on the sides. Now, there are some that you can use and it will slightly turn your paint color or it kind of gives a different texture to the chalk. This does not. It gives it still that chalked look. It's not glossy. It is very matte, which I love and use a lot on a lot of my painted pieces. I have even used it on when I use my chalked spray paint pieces and it holds up and it's super durable and I love using it. So I will try to find also an Amazon linked for you in the description. Now my desk makeover just wouldn't be complete unless I also found this dumpster find of a gorgeous wood, yes, in the dumpster, in the trash. One of my neighbors, I guess, is moving and got rid of some amazing, amazing wood pieces. And this was one of the finds that I picked up. I gave it a light sanding, kind of just to get rid of that shine, which I don't feel like you can tell. And then I cleaned off all of the dust with one of my cleaning rags. And I am using, yes again, my favorite, favorite chalk spray paint. This is a great project idea if you have never tried painting furniture. I have done several projects, which I will link down below, and you can see in the cards but it is wonderful. The coverage is just amazing. You do not have to prime if you feel uncomfortable. I honestly rarely prime because I clear coat and that's just my preference. I will also have several of my favorite, favorite, favorite furniture flippers in their channels because I want you guys to get lots of inspiration and just be challenged to try something fun and new. And also since I am spraying and it is cold in my garage, I do a very, very, very light spray coat. And why I did have to go back in and do a second coat. Whenever it's colder than the temperature they recommend, you just have to kind of be conscious that the spray paint could bubble or have other options or other side effects. But if you do light coats, you should be fine. Now I am going in with this Valspar Black, which is in a really fun matte color, and I'm going to be spray, spray painting. <laughs> well, I'm telling you words I don't get. I'm just a stumbler mumbler. I'm going to spray paint the legs all in the black. Now some little scatter on those little wheels did get a little bit of blue. So the black spray paint, it adheres to any surface, which is great. And I just kind of fixed any of those imperfections that I had from over spraying. And of course, here is the grand finale. I hope you guys are so inspired and that you love some transformational furniture flips. I absolutely love this piece. Now, yes, that hole is for our computer, for our monitor and all of the wires. And I'll have to share some final stage pieces when we get everything set up over on my Instagram. But I just love the top, how it turned out. It does have a gloss sheen with the polyacrylic, but I also wanted it super durable. And this is perfect for my son doing his school and which you know how kids are, they're gonna try to damage it. I hope you guys enjoy this playlist and that you guys are inspired. And I have a fun little preview that I hope you guys will enjoy for next month's furniture flip. And you may be wondering, where's the chair? Well, you'll have to stay tuned for next month's grand reveal of the finished project. That's right, guys. Get your paintbrushes and projects ready for March 5th at 5. We will be having a new co-host, which is my friend, Domestic Diva. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.